Another topic that had a little more meat on the bone yesterday, the dynamic we've seen this preseason, and this isn't new. It just so happened that there was an injury suffered by Kayvon Thibodeau by this technique, and T.J. Watt escaped a serious injury on Sunday when T.J. Hawkinson applied a legal cut block in the tackle box. Here it is from the preseason finale. T.J. Watt trying to get toward the ball carrier. T.J. Hawkinson taking him out, helping him up. You could tell he's like, you know, hey, man, this is, I mean, this is what they tell me to do. If I don't do this, I got to hear it from, I got to hear it from Dan Campbell. This is how they draw the play up. Now, Chris, we talked about it when Thaddeus Moss did it. You could go in a little bit higher and not take out the knee. That's the one criticism that brings into question whether it's clean. We know it's legal. The question is, is it clean? We'll talk about it in a minute. Here's T.J. Watt from yesterday speaking to reporters and and really shedding some light on the problem that the defensive player in that situation faces. Here he is. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those plays where it's, it's a completely legal play. I obviously don't have much to say about it. it um, There's a few words exchanged. It was just like, sorry, I had to do that, something like that. And I was just didn't really have any words to say back to him or frustration or anything, but... Um, it, those blocks are always tough to deal with. Like I said, it is a legal block, so I can't be too upset. Um, but it's also one of those things where I honestly don't know what I can do differently in that situation. I mean, I, I see him in the wide out position coming across. Um, we make eye contact. I'm like, all right, let's do this. And I get ready for the to make contact. And at the last second, when I don't go to duck my head, um, he obviously goes low. But um, like I said, I, Obviously, it's being taught because it's a legal move, so I don't really have any grudge against it. I just have to figure out how to handle it better. Should it be, should it be a legal move? I don't know. I mean, I don't really want to get in the weeds and all the what should and shouldn't be legal in football, but uh, like I said, I just have to find a way to be better in that situation to protect myself. It really is a tough spot because if you choose to hurdle and the guy doesn't go low, There's a huge then gap. you're taking a... Yeah, and 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 you're possibly taking a face mask no, to the yeah uh, sensitive area that you're trying to who knows over right with. So you, you got to make that decision, and the reality is the the cut block is still legal there. We've talked about this before. It goes back to the notion that has been part of football forever that the block below the waist is the way that the big guy is taken down by the little guy. And it's been part of football forever. I remember back in the 70s when they first eliminated it on kick returns, blocking below the waist. I remember being very confused as a young football fan, like, what, what, wait a minute, what, what, what's, the, what, what's the problem here? And it's amazing to think that back in the 70s, the Wild West of the NFL, that they actually cared enough about the health and safety of the players to eliminate that technique on kick returns. But we have seen it now in recent years, especially after the sensitivity to head injuries. You had a lot of outcry from players. Hey, you got to worry about our legs too. If we're worried about the health and safety of the players, let's restrict the areas where we can do these techniques where defensive players get blown up, either when they're not looking, the blind side block in many respects is gone. And the, the below the block or the below the waist, excuse me, block. This is one of the only areas where you can still do it. Is in the tackle box. Yeah, uh, well, so you know, maybe they just need to get rid of it. I, I, I think they do. I think they got to get rid of it. I, I don't think it's really necessary. First off, T.J. Hawkinson can make that block, just going, hitting him with his right shoulder. His, can we show the play again, uh, guys, uh, in the back? Uh, you have your head on the inside there, and you're gonna have to man up and block him. Sorry, I don't like it. And like when I grew up in high school. And like this stuff didn't go on a whole lot. This was not. This is like it was against the rules to go and down, go down and do that. It is kind of like one of those things where you know I don't love about the game. It needs to change. Pass rushers are arguably, other than wide receiver and quarterback, the next biggest stars in our sport. What are you supposed to do? It can be a career-ending, career, you know, uh, career just turning your career in a different direction type of injury if he does tear his ACL and MCL. and That would be career altering. Career, thank you. I, that was the word I was looking at. I would have right. helped you, but I couldn't think of it either. Uh, yeah, good. Thank you. And, you know, Mike, I know I, your point, I, I get that point about this is how the smaller guy but, you know, at some point I just go, well, this is football. And so what are they going to do for the big guy that has to deal with the fast guy? Are they going to make a rule to slow him down? Because it's not fair to the big guy that he's not as fast as the smaller fast guy. 
So maybe they Hit should. Him with a helmet. Well, maybe they no, should kidding. do something to make them run slower to even it out. No, then no, no. Hey, smaller guys, sorry, you're smaller. Deal with it. Use your speed. Figure out a new way. I don't know, but. Going down at the knees and all that, I think that's got to end. I think they got to stop that. I don't like this right there, and, and that would be my two cents about it. And, and, and let's look at this pragmatically. Yeah. Because in the tackle box, are you really going to have a five foot seven inch receiver exactly trying to right take there. out a pass rusher? Exactly right. If you are, you're just, a dumb coach. Right. Yeah. It's, it's, it reminds me of one of my favorite NFL highlights of all time. When and, and we've talked about it in the past because, you know, you draw up the X's and O's and it looks good until you have to actually do it. There was a Thursday night game in the 90s where Chris Carter was trying to block Reggie White. Yeah, we, yeah, we've right. had fun with it before right. because Reggie White picks Chris Carter up and throws him into the legs of Warren Moon. Right. Just picks him up and throws him. So if you're going to draw up that play, why not have TJ Hawkinson? You know where he's going. You know who's going to be coming off that edge. Just just hit him high. Yeah. There's no reason to roll into his leg. Right. Or just, you know, in the midsection. You could put your shoulder right here in his hip. But, you know, there is a spot there where you get down to it and you go, it's just it's not fair for the defensive player. What is he supposed to do? The defensive players are so screwed over in this day and age in the NFL as it is. And now we're putting them in a little bit of a dangerous way here. And, you know, again, in like little league football and sports like that, that, this doesn't, you're not allowed to do this stuff. And I grew up in little league football and I'm pretty sure in high school, but even if it wasn't legal in high school, nobody ever talked about it. In Jersey, we were a bunch of meatheads. They were like, what? You're going low, you freaking wimp. You better put your head right in his chest next time. You know, so I, again, there's, I don't think it becomes more of a thing actually at the NFL level. Because, yeah, coaches coach it that way. There is some freaky players in certain positions where they're like, oh, it's going to be tough to block them. But, again, I think you got to protect the stars here, protect the players in general. And I don't – yeah, I don't like it. I think the NFL has got to make an adjustment here. I think I've told this story before, but during my own very limited football playing career, playing defensive line because I was kind of a large lad back in the day, we played a team one time where the guards were tiny little guys. And – the tackle actually would throw the guard into the legs of the defensive lineman to knock them down after the snap. That was, and we didn't know what to do. We're getting knocked down because the tackle is actually helping throw the guard into our legs to knock us down. I'm serious. That happened. That's not just a riff on one of the questions we got for today that we're not going to use later. That actually happened. Now, here's my question. Yeah. Why, why are you doing this in the preseason? Is this some weird sort of way for Dan Campbell to make pass rushers afraid of what they may face and they know they're going to have this dilemma on running plays and, and maybe they're going to get their legs taken out and maybe they are going to get a torn ACL, so maybe they're going to have a little less steam coming off the edge? Well, there is part of that. Play it's, than it's they otherwise about, would? Is yeah. that what this is? It's a, I think that is part of it. One, it's, hey, get your job done, and the best way to get it done against a guy like T.J. Watt is just go low because that cancels him out a little bit. And, yes, it slows down players like that from just going crazy after the quarterback all the time. You know, it makes them think a little bit. But, you know, I, and I, it's, I don't think it's a Dan Campbell problem. I think it's something that a lot of teams in football coach. This is what they do. And, uh, yeah, I think there's got to be an adjustment here to protect the pass rushers, find a new way. Yep. And, and again, TJ Hawkinson, what is TJ Hawkinson? 6'5", 250? He's the same size as TJ Watt. It's, it's not a difference there. TJ Watt's probably 10 pounds bigger. You know, th there's no need for that right there at all. And I, he can get the block done by coming across, having his head on this side, TJ Watt's here, and okay, it's time to buck up, Bart. You're going to have to hold hold your ground. And if you can, then they can't. They shouldn't put you there. And they got to get a blocking tight end more that's more equipped to do it. Uh, that would be my two cents. But I'd like to see a little protection for the defensive players in this area, especially the pass rushers who, and a lot of teams, are the second highest paid guy on the team other than the quarterback. Well, and T.J. Watt is the, the highest. highest paid, if not still the highest paid defensive player in all of football. Right. I, I like what you said, though, what it does. And we, we heard – T.J. Watt, explain the dilemma he's now dealing with, the uncertainty he's dealing with. What am I going to do in these situations? That may just take off enough yes. 
to, to keep him from getting into the backfield if he's thinking about that. And I think he will resolve it to say, I just ultimately can't worry about it. I can't worry about it. I can't have this in my head. But, but it is a little bit of a message to pass rushers that the Lions may be facing, and it's a message to Watt generally, and maybe the other teams in the AFC North are going to be happy about this. He needs to, he needs to have a plan, and he needs to be careful because you can't just go 100% all the time because in the tackle box, somebody's going to dive at your knees, and there's nothing you can do about it unless the NFL changes the rule. And I think we agree completely on this. Yeah. They need to just change that rule. Yeah. There's no right. reason in the tackle box for someone to dive at someone's knees to make a block. They're big enough and they're strong enough to throw a conventional block that is at or above the waist. Exactly um, right. All right. Yeah. Well, we've, we've solved one of the NFL's problems today. If they'll on our tab. be inclined to listen to us and actually do what needs to be done proactively, not reactively, although it is kind of reactively if they would do it now. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.